And here we go. Draft week in the NBA. Should the Thunder look to trade up the board in this year's NBA draft? Plus, how did I do? Acting as Sam Presti in the Locked On Mock Draft. We'll talk about all that coming up on today's Locked On Thunder podcast. You are Locked On Thunder, your daily Oklahoma City Thunder podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Let's get it going on the Lockdown Thunder Podcast, on the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. I am your host, Rylan Styles. You can follow me on Twitter at Rylan underscore Styles. Follow the show on Twitter at LO Thunder Pod. Email the show, LO Thunder Pod at gmail.com. On today's show, brought to you by Game Time. We're going to dive into should the Thunder look to trade up in the 2023 NBA draft? Who should they target? If they were to make a move up the draft board, and how did I do in the Locked On Mock Draft that came out last week? And get into all that and more, but first, download the Game Time app, create your account, and use the code LOCKEDONNBA for $20 off your first purchase. Last-minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. You everydayers, make sure to make us your first listen every single morning, every single day. We're here for you talking Thunder basketball. You do not want to miss an episode we're coming at you a lot this week, every day where you have today's show talking about trading up. Tomorrow's show, we're going to dive into draft week and preview the latest rumors and talk about what to look forward to. On Tuesday, we're going to talk with Derek Parker of Draft Digest to discuss the NBA draft with him. Wednesday, we're going to get down to the nitty gritty of the best the worst, the most likely case scenario for the Oklahoma City Thunder come draft night and Thursday morning. It's the final countdown, the final predictions for what we think will happen in this week. Also this week, a mailbag podcast. The last one pre-draft. So get all of your draft-related questions in right this second on Twitter at Ryland underscore Styles and also in the YouTube comment section down below. So the ultimate Locked On mock draft took place yet again last week. This is my favorite project to be a part of every single year. You should go listen to it right now. It's across all platforms. You can hear from every Locked On NBA host as we make our our selections. New this year, if you've listened in the past, this is a new feature this year. You can hear our war room. We were all in a big zoom call during the draft and we gave our live reactions to each pick and i'm not gonna lie to you some hosts got absolutely obliterated by the war room for their decision making you can also hear from a friend of the show rafael barlow mavs draft as well and the college hosts from these prospects colleges uh, to give you more of a college feel for their game and what they did the last year so it's an amazing project Uh, i had to act as sam presti We recorded this the Thursday after the lottery. So you can then see what we were on the right track with and what maybe was off base a bit. So let's dive into this ultimate mock draft. And again, uh, either pause it and go listen to it right now and then come back or just listen to this all the way through because you're going to gain more information and insight from other voices as you go listen to the the mock draft. We're really going to talk about what you've heard from this podcast's feed uh, from what the Thunder did. So this is how the top of the draft shook up. Victor, of course, goes number one, no surprise. The 2-3 battle, the Hornets took Scoot Henderson, which I think is the right move. I think that's what Charlotte should do in real life. And Portland could not swing a trade, so they stay at three and take Brandon Miller. From there, you have the Thompson Twins going 4-5 to the Rockets and the Pistons. Uh, Amen went to Houston. Azar went to the Pistons. Our shakeup. And this is what not only shook the draft room, but shook Thunder Ion, which is actually, in this case, my office. When the Orlando Magic, with the sixth overall pick, selected Grady Dick, I knew right then and there I would be able to swing a move. Because 
when you look at the board to take Grady Dick at six and have the top six names be Victor Scoot Miller, as we expect, the Thompson Twins and Grady Dick, there had to be somebody in that range that the Thunder can get up to. And so the draft continues to play out with Therese Walker at seven to the Pacers, which seems to be right spot on for the Pacers. And then at eight, the Wizards selected Cam Whitmore. And as soon as Locked On Wizards pulled out the Cam Whitmore name, I knew I had to make a move. I was excited. I was buttering up my boss, David Locke, host of Locked On Jazz, and the radio voice for the Utah Jazz. And I said, look, David, I'll give you back your pick in 2024. You have all the flexibility in the world now. You, 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 you don't have to be bound by these top 10 protections. You get your pick back. I'll give you pick 12. And we get to move up a bit to number nine. And David Locke not only said yes to that trade, not only did he make the move, but in fact, he thought he overwhelmingly won the trade, which I have quorums with. I think that the Thunder won the trade. I actually think it's a win-win for both sides. Like, that's my quorum. Is that the, the, is that the Jazz benefit, the Thunder benefit, and it's a perfect match. I don't think that either side overwhelmingly won anything because when the Thunder, in this case, jumped to number nine, I was able to select for Oklahoma City, Taylor Hendricks. I think Taylor Hendricks is one of the perfect fits in Oklahoma City, is one of the perfect players to bring in on draft night if they're able to swing this trade. And so the biggest takeaway from the top of this draft is that while I obviously do not expect Grady Dick to be selected sixth overall on Thursday. I think it highlights what we see every year, and yet every year we're still surprised by it. Every year there is this surprise jump from a player on draft night that was not on anybody's radar, that we think we've nailed their range, we think we've nailed where they're going to go, what teams they're going to be linked to, but then on draft night, things change, and there's a little a little boom, a, a little splatter on the wall of, of a mess. You you can argue that you know Josh Kitty was a was a splash on the wall mess where like everyone was saying, well, the Thunder had terrible lottery luck. It's they're just gonna you know draft Kaminga and move on and and they're gonna see if this project can work out. And then on draft night, a guy who was slotted for you know 10 or 12 range, even 15 as low as there, leaps up to number six. So there's going to be a surprise, and we don't know what that surprise is. And so it kind of illustrates how perfectly positioned Oklahoma City is for that draft day surprise to benefit them. And in this case, it did. In my opinion, the Thunder got one of their three best prospects on their big board. Now, now you take away, you know, Victor, you take away Scoot, take away Brendan Miller, you take away that, that group. Of the rest of the board, I think Jerese Walker, Taylor Hendricks, and Grady Dick are three of the best prospects that Oklahoma City could walk away with to fit their team and, and really complement the score on Thursday night. And because of that shakeup and the way the board failed, you were able to just leap up to number nine with a deal that made sense for both sides and get this perfect player for Oklahoma City. And so this is why it's one of my favorite projects of the year because it, it, even though it was recorded well in advance, and I, and I don't think that Orlando, uh, uh, Philip R Rossman Reich would take Brady Dick at six if we did this mock draft today. It just shows that no matter when you do this experiment, even in, at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn on Thursday, there's going to be something unexpected. And the Thunder are well positioned to capitalize on that unexpectedness. So how would you grade this trade? I did 12 and the Utah Jazz 2024 first round pick back to Utah. And I got nine and got Taylor Hendricks. I think that this is an overwhelming win for Oklahoma City and the Jazz feel the same way, which is perfect. The rest of the draft shook out this way. So I took Taylor Hendricks at, at nine. Dallas took Anthony Black at 10. The Knicks swung a trade with the Magic. Listen, I love Phillip. Love him to death. Terrible mock draft. Terrible mock draft. But it's okay. He's learned, he did a whole podcast explaining the moves and then what he's learned from this draft process, but, but bad draft. Uh, the Knicks went to number 11 and got Jordan Hawkins. At 12, the Utah Jazz with the Thunders pick that I gave to David. Uh, the Jazz selected Kaysan Wallace. Uh, the, the Raptors selected Kobe Bufkin uh, at number 13. At 14, the Pelicans selected Nick Smith Jr. At 15, uh, 
Derek Lively went to the Hawks. In 16, the Jazz got Leonard Miller. Now, I, I, I say this because I'm, I'm, again, illustrating here that we just went through the top 16 picks, and there's a lot of names that went past 12 that, that you would really enjoy with OKC, especially at 25. And again, this was recorded th- the Thursday after the lottery, so having it at 25 was almost a little bit of foresight uh, on our part at Locked On, was uh, Black Lubale. And so when you look at the surprises that could happen, Black Lubale could, could leap up. Uh, you know, Kobe Buffkin could leap up, leap up in, into the top 12. And that has to push somebody down the ladder, either all the way down to 12, and somebody has to remain that you really like, or down to a more appealing range that you could move up to, uh, you know, nine, 10, eight, whatever. So I, I think that this Locked On Mock Draft, you should go listen to it, not only for the great insight from our host and also from Rafael Barlow, who you heard on this podcast before, Mavs Draft, same thing. Um, but also because it illustrates kind of what happens on draft night and, and the, the kind of surprises that can go and how they have ripple effects across the other picks. The other deal I had on the table, we're going to get to, and I want to get your input on this because I, I honestly did not know if I should if I should pull the trigger on this deal whenever it was presented to me. So I want your thoughts on if you would do this. Plus, we're going to dive into if the Thunder are going to move up from 12, who should they go after if they move up from 12? Who would be worth it, and who would you just rather stay put and let the chips fall where they may? We're going to talk about all that coming up, but first, I want to tell you right now, better good friends over at Bird Dogs, folks. Bird Dogs, it's incredible. I mean, it truly is incredible. Go there right now. Go to birddogs.com slash locked in NBA. And whenever you go there, you're going to see their wonderful assortment of shorts and, and apparel that you should be wearing because they are just brilliant. And you also get a free tumbler, uh, you know, Yeti style tumbler that keeps your drinks warm. I drink my coffee out of it every single morning. Uh, it's, it's brilliant. So you can get that by going to, uh, to birddogs.com slash locked on, enter the code locked in MBA, and you'll get a free Yeti tumbler with your order. Whenever you go to birddogs.com slash locked on MBA, they have these brilliant shorts that are versatile. I call them the thunder of shorts because not only are they great quality, but they're versatile. You can wear them to a business meeting. You can leave said business meeting, go out to the basketball court and play basketball because they're so stretchy and flexible, but also look extremely presentable. So check it out today by going to birddogs.com slash locked on NBA. We're back on the Lockdown Thunder podcast, on the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Ryland Styles. You can follow me on Twitter at Ryland underscore Styles. Follow the show on Twitter at LL Thunderpod. Email the show, LL Thunderpod at gmail.com. On today's show, we're diving into the NBA draft with our Lockdown Mock Draft review and also who the Thunder should target as they trade up the draft board. You can also text the show, 405-963-3686. You can get access to Q&As, Intel, everything out there on subtext by signing up today uh, at the Lockdown Thunder subtext, 405-963-3686. Check that out as well. So let's continue diving in here now to the mock draft and then who to trade up for. So the, the other deal I had on the table besides this deal with Utah and look, whenever Grady Dick went at six, my sights immediately set to Utah. Cause I knew that some, one of the bigs Walker or Hendricks had to fall there. The other deal on the table was with Dallas. And this was actually contingent upon Grady Dick being on the board. Cause I didn't think that the other two had a chance to get to 10. Dallas would send pick 10 for 12 into 2024 first round pick. Assuming no crazy names fall, which again, bad to assume. You know what happens when you assume? I mean, boom. Assuming nothing crazy happened. And of the three big names that people want to trade up for, Grady Dick was the one that was left at pick 10. Do you think pick 12 and a 24 first round pick provides that value? enough value to go get ready dick does he provide that value for that for that situation or would you rather just keep your asset in the future and see who falls to 12 and make that selection now you know i am high on gritty dick i think that gritty dick would provide a lot of what oklahoma city needs and even as you execute that trade with denver that will give them the least favorable uh 2024 pick uh i think that trading another 24 pick to say, you know, Dallas or whoever owns the 10th pick for them to move down two spots, but you get a guy in the echelon of Grady Dick or Drew Walker or Taylor Hendricks would be, would be good value. 
for a team whenever you look at how weak the 24 class is supposed to be, which a lot can change. Like you can just think of countless prospects who have both risen and fallen in the 12 month cycle, which is what we're going to get into. Like the 24 class looks bad now, but other players have looked great a month out from the draft and then look terrible and vice versa. So we'll see where the Dutch settles on that 24 class in a year from now. But, but the details and the data suggests that this is not a strong 24 class. So unloading two out of the four picks wouldn't be too bad if you're Oklahoma City. But at that point, I wonder if the value would more so suggest just staying put. Let's get into that value and trading up in the draft. Should the Thunder trade up on draft day is an interesting discussion because I think that your mind instantly goes to, well, absolutely. I mean, duh. I mean, they have all these other assets. Like, they they should just go get their guy. But it's hard to overwhelm a team when it comes to draft night. Because in draft night, you know what's in front of you. In draft night, you know the prospect. You don't know the future of uh, the the drafts and the team's future that you're going to get the picks from. So it's harder to overwhelm a team on draft night whenever they think that they've got their guy and they've circled their guy. So to put it simply, let's just look at look at a few examples of draft day trades. Luca and Trey Young. The Hawks wanted Trey Young. They wanted him, but they knew they were too high to take him. The Mavericks desperately the whole time wanted Luca. And so the Hawks get their guy. Dallas gets their guy. You throw in an extra first round pick. On the flip side, it's been well documented. The Thunder wanted Evan Mobley and tried their hardest to issue a godfather package to move up from six to three to get Evan Mobley. It's been well documented. Woj even said it last week. But the Thunder could not give Cleveland their guy. So this godfather package of all these picks, and think back to how many the Thunder had in that 21 draft. This godfather offer for all these picks does not matter if you cannot give them their guy. And you also have cases like last year where the Thunder gave up three future first-round picks for pick 11 and got Usman Jang. But the Thunder aren't trying to trade for a mid to late lottery pick. If, if, to move up from 12, you're, you're having to move up to the, to the higher, you know, better lottery spots. So when you break down the board, nobody's going to get Victor Mignogna. Like, like He's a spur. They should even televise the first pick. He's a spur. Like Just start the draft. Adam comes out, gives his whole spiel. Spurs select with Victor, and then you move on. Put put the Hornets on the clock. But I digress. Because of what we just mentioned with the Evan Mobley thing, I do not think that the Thunder could realistically get to Henderson and Miller. Because, I, because in my opinion, they're only going to be willing to offer future first-round picks. They're not going to be willing to offer pieces of this core for the second or third pick. So take those three guys off the table immediately. That leaves four to 12 in that range. Does OKC, does OKC, you know, offering Houston all their old stuff back, does that really move the needle for the Rockets in terms of the severe drop-off of, you know, prospect tier that they're going to get? You put all these prospects in a tier, a drop-off from four to where you're going to get pick 12, you know, th- that's pretty significant. And with just simply getting your own stuff back for a team that has already um, kind of brought back their, their, asset barn, you know, kind of loaded it back up with assets from that James Harden trade. Um, th- does that really move the needle? So I'd say let's, let's take Houston off the table as well. Then you get down to Detroit at five. You know, you, you can talk yourself into Detroit wanting more assets, but again, the tier drop off, I think would just be too rich. Orlando is interesting, but I, I don't think that they want to pick at 11 and 12 versus picking at, at six and 12 for the sake of uh, future assets. Indiana, same thing. Interesting. I could see it happen, but I don't feel comfortable saying it'll happen. It's hard to find the pathway for that to happen. I think that the sweet spot is eight to 10. Because again, I, I don't see the reason to trade up one spot in this draft. Like once you get to you know, 10, 11, 12, someone's going to be there at 12 that you like, and that there's no real point to, to kind of bolster up any further. So the sweet spot to me is, you know, eight to 10, at eight, you have Washington, who was clearly signaling that they're going to rebuild. In fact, by the time that 
uh, this video finishes processing on YouTube, they might have already traded Bradley Beal. Uh, and they want to do an OKC style rebuild and they want all these future picks and everything else to where, to where them dropping from eight to 12 would not be some significant drop off in tier in the sense of uh, where they're at in their franchise and, and where they're at uh, in terms of like the drop off of tier would be kind of balanced out by recouping a surplus of picks and a surplus of assets that, that, that the Wizards do not have yet. So uh, they're interesting. They're for sure interesting. Then you have Utah. Utah's the cleanest pathway to a trade-up. They have a, they have multiple first-round picks, uh, so maybe they're not as concerned with dropping back a few slots for the sake of getting their pick back next year, which, again, Utah, much like Houston, has built up their, their draft currency since that you know, since they did that Rudy Gobert and Donald Mitchell, tra Mitchell trade, but it is just the principle of taking that, that toll off of next season, that pressure off of next season, to where you don't have to react. The Thunder didn't have to react this year. The Thunder were not bound by pick protections or anything else. So they got to play out their full season. They got to see SGA be a, a you know, fifth place in MVP voting, be first team all NBA, make the play and have fun. And they got their pick at 12. Whereas with Utah, if, if they had that same kind of fun run next year, if they put together the pieces and Laura repeated his success, you'd have to pull the plug just like they did this year, pull the plug and hope that you were able to get, um, you know, the top 10 pick. And if they were, even a game more competitive, they would be in danger of losing their pick because they'd be in Dallas a slot where Dallas Dallas could have gotten jumped uh, and pushed back down out of the top ten. So I, I just don't uh, think that people kind of realize necessarily outside of OKC and, and Utah how beneficial that trade swap would be for OKC. So that's why I think that nine is the sweet spot. Uh, at ten, you know, at ten, Dallas wants to trade that pick. They've 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 kind of left no. Uh, smoke around that, I guess you'd say, or like there's enough, no kind of secret about wanting to trade down. They're just wanting to trade out of the 10th overall pick and get a veteran. But if they're stuck at 10 and they have to pick somebody for a team that is depleted of assets, would you rather drop down two spots, build back up your asset farm and then take your prospect there? That could work to me. So that's what you're looking at when it comes to trading up. But who are you looking to trade for in this case? Like if you're looking to trade up, who would it be for? And in my opinion, the number one, like the one, one of who you should look to trade for on draft night on Thursday is Dries Walker. He is amazing defensively and it will translate to the NBA. He has true defense and offense transition potential position versatility, really good score at the rim as a cutter, as a roller, as a dunker spot guy that you can just dump the ball off to amazing athlete. And I do buy into a shooting upside. So that's why I have Walker ahead of Taylor Hendricks, who I think would equally, as I obviously did in the mock draft, be a wonderful option for Oklahoma City to trade up for. And I'll tell you why coming up. But first, I want to say right now, our good friends over at Game Time, folks. Game Time is incredible. Check it out today by using code Locked in NBA. When you do, you're going to get $20 off of your first purchase. They have last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed, comedy clubs, music, sporting events. Everything you can want, theater, they have everything you can want at game time. Go to game time right now, code locked in NBA for $20 off your first purchase. Check it out today at game time with the app or game time.com. Locked in NBA is the code for $20 off your first purchase for the last minute prices uh, guaranteed. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. You get a view from your seat, which is awesome. You get event uh, cancellation protection, which is awesome. Job loss protection, which is incredible. Check it out today, game time. Locked in NBA, $20 off. We're back on the Lockdown Thunder Podcast. On the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. For you everydayers, a lot of great stuff. Monday is our final mailbag Monday before the NBA draft. So get all of your pre-NBA draft questions on YouTube and on Twitter at Ryland underscore Styles. And then Tuesday, we'll talk with Derek Parker of Draft Digest, which is going to be a lot of fun. Wednesday, we'll preview the latest scuttlebutt around the NBA draft. Thursday, the best, worst, and most likely case scenarios for the Thunder heading into the draft. And on Friday, we're going to recap the draft. Saturday, we're going to recap the um, rookie press conference. Monday, we'll do winners and losers from the NBA draft. And then 
Tuesday, we're talking about how the draft picks fit. Wednesday, we'll talk in summer league roster and everything else. It's going to be a lot of fun. Stay tuned. Locked on Thunder anywhere you get your podcast from, including on YouTube. And guess what, folks? Wednesday's pod also is going to include my big board so you know where I have every prospect ahead of the NBA draft. So it'll be a lot of fun this week. Continuing on, who to trade up for? Walker is my 1-1. One, one. Taylor Hendricks would be my 1-B. Uh, great on-ball defender, great versatility. 39% from three, rim-protecting threat. Going to take a charge, going to die for a loose ball, going to do everything that you love to see. Pick-and-roll threat as a shooter and a finisher. Incredible athlete. And the lineups that you could put out here. This is why I love his fit. You can roll out there. SGA, Josh Giddy, Jalen Williams, Taylor Hendricks, Chet Holmgren have the best young core in the NBA. In different moments in the game against different matchups of, of the NBA, you can roll out their SGA, Dort, J-Dub, Hendricks, and Chet and just dominate defensively, smother teams defensively. You can play small like the Thunder like to do with him at the five in that second unit. You, you can just do everything with Taylor Hendricks. He not only helps you as a top-end talent, but he helps you elongate your depth by the different lineups and combinations you can work through to get your patchwork through a 48-minute game. So I really like what Taylor Hendricks can provide. Number two, or three if you keep him checking home, but who's counting really? Gritty Dick. Hey, if you listen to the draft profiles like you should have, you know that I think Gritty Dick is the Bee Gees of this draft. More than a shooter, more than a shooter to me. And not only is he an elite shooter, an elite relocator, a play finisher, but I think he's good enough defensively off ball to where you can hide him within this team construct, which is very strong in Oklahoma City. An elite catch and shoot option on the drive and kick from Shea. He's a really nice playmaker. Like He keeps the offense moving in rhythm and he's able to work in transition. He's able to, to out scrap you as well, as much as that is a cliche. This team, we have seen what adding even a, a millimeter of shooting does. Let's get some inches of shooting. Let's get some feet worth of shooting and gra a draft Grady Dick. So I think that that would be a great option for OKC to trade up for. Uh, Azar Thompson, it's interesting because I think he has such a wide range on draft night. I think that he can go anywhere in the draft, um, you know, in the lottery. But I like his play finishing ability at the rim. I think that he can do more with the ball in his hands than he's gotten the show to this point in his career because, you know, he's playing with Eamon all the time. Um, does he have more shooting upside than Eamon? I think you can argue that. I think he's a really good defender. So, like, as a play finishing defender that has playmaking chops, I, I think that he's interesting uh, if you want to trade up for him. Cam Whitmore is one of my personal favorite prospects. I love Cam Whitmore. Um, I think that you know it might not be the right the right blend in OKC, but the high school stuff is elite from Cam Whitmore. It was a nasty, messy situation in, at Nova that I think he's getting overly penalized for because he has such positional and defensive versatility. He's such a high level athlete, high level defender, great cutter, just great rim finisher in general. Shot thirty four percent from three in college, but he has upside at that at, at shooting the ball. I think. Uh, and, and he's not an elite playmaker, but I also don't think he's a terrible one th that he kind of looked like in college. I think he's more so closer to a, to a good playmaker than he is a terrible one. Um, and, and, and so with Cam Whitmore, he doesn't fit your mold, but at some point the mold is going to change, right? Like at some point you're going to have enough of these, you know, hyperactive playmakers and you need someone to finish the play for them. And maybe you know, the draft is now to get that. And maybe the draft is next year or in two years or in five years, whenever. Um, but at some point, the mold will change. And I don't think it'll be on Thursday, but at some point it will. And so if it does change Thursday, Cam Whitmore is a great option to me. Then you have Anthony Black. And if you listen to his draft profile, you know I like Anthony Black a lot, but I don't know if it's an OKC. But I love his you know playmaking ability, the way that he can lead an offense, lead the pick and roll charge. Uh, and can really help carry the load. Like he would be awesome in OKC uh, because you would have him in your second unit and that would take the load and pressure off of needing to stagger SGA and Giddy all the time. And he can really help you bring depth and help you kind of keep those guys fresh throughout the 82 game season. Uh, and I think that he can be one of the best best perimeter defenders in the in the league, in the class, uh, for this draft class. 
And I think that as a willing shooter and as a guy who has seen some mechanical tweaks already, you put him with Chip England and he has some shooting potential as well. Uh, not going to be a 40% three-point shooter, but also uh, I don't think he'll be a below average three-point shooter for long. I think he'll be like kind of on that on that Josh Giddy sweet spot track uh, with uh, with some really good defense and athleticism. So really good player uh, for Anthony Black. So we've talked about who to trade up for and some of your favorite names might not have been on that list. Here's why. Somebody has to fall to OKC. We've talked about the three guys who are untouchable. We've talked about trading up for Walker, Hendricks, Grady Dick, Azar Thompson, Cam Whitmore, Anthony Black. But you still have Leonard Miller, who you know I'm a Leonard Miller stan. You still have Black Lubale, who is so fun and I think can be really good for OKC. Kaysan Wallace is good. Jordan Hawkins is an incredible shooter. Kobe Bufkin's a great option. Like everyone's not going to be gone. And so that's why when you mix the the hardships of, of trading up in the draft with the idea that there's going to be a surprise and that there's going to be somebody that, that falls to 12, this, this overwhelming agreement that the Thunder are going to trade up might not be there. But if it is, they have a lot of great options. And so that's why I think that you are to the core of why you're getting all these draft rumors. I'm like, oh, they're, they've promised Bufkin. They've promised Kulabale. They've, they've been linked to Leonard Miller. They've been linked to Derek Lively. Oh, they, they, they're going to move up. Oh, they're going to move back came out the, the other day. All those things are coming out because the Thunder can truly do anything. Trading back makes sense. Trading up makes sense. Staying at 12 makes sense. Drafting a guard makes sense. Drafting a big man makes sense. Like all these things make sense. So you can you can tie them all to each other. You can kind of you can kind of spin the web any way you want to. The Thunder are in such a flexible and good position on Thursday that they can truly do anything. And so we just won't know. And, and we'll be surprised when we get the notification and we watch it on television of what happened. And we'll talk about it. But the Thunder can truly pull off anything on Thursday. They don't have to move up. They don't have to stay at 12. They can move back. They can draft at 12. They can draft any position. Like this roster is at a point right now where it's so flexible that you can make anything work. You can make even a guy like Anthony Black work. Who people look at and, you know, compared to Josh Kitty. You, you can make anything work. And so that's why you're getting an influx of draft rumors about OKC. So there you have it. We're going to start getting down to the bottom of it on the Locked on Thunder podcast and also recap it on Friday. So stay tuned. Subscribe anywhere you get your podcast from, including on YouTube. Follow me on Twitter at Ryland underscore styles. And until tomorrow for our final mailbag Monday before the draft, be good and be good to one another.